Johnny Tremaine, Chapter 10, Part 3 The 18th of April By afternoon, the sergeants were going about the town, rounding up the grenadiers and light infantry companies, telling them in whispers to report at moonrise at the bottom of the common, equipped for an expedition. The sergeants would tap their red noses with their fingers and bid the men be whist, but it was common knowledge in the barracks and on the streets that 700 men would march that night. This very night, come darkness, the men would move. But in what direction? And who would be in charge of the expedition? Surely not more than one of the colonels would be sent. Johnny, who had his own colonel to watch, Colonel Smith, hardly left the African Queen all day and helped the pot boy serve drinks to the officers in the dining room. A young officer sitting with stranger did say, as he stirred his brandy and water with his thumb, that he hoped before long thus to stir Yankee blood. And what of that? Colonel Smith did have an army chaplain to dine with him that day. Did that mean he was suddenly getting religious, as people are said to before they go into danger? Of one thing Johnny was sure. Dove knew much less than he did. Dove was so thick-witted he had no idea anything unusual was afoot. He honestly believed that the grenadiers and light infantry were merely going to be taught new evolutions. As usual, Dove was too wrapped in his own woes to think much of what was happening about him. By five, Johnny thought he would leave the Queen and report to Paul Revere that he had discovered nothing new. First, one more glance at Dove. For once, he found him hard at work. His lower lip stuck out his whitish pig lashes wet. He was polishing a saddle. That guy, he complained, hit me for nothing. He said I was to get to work on his campaign saddle. Who's he? Colonel Smith, of course. Did you do as he told you? I tried. I didn't know he had two saddles. So I went to work on the usual one. I shined it until you can see your face in it. And he takes it out of my hands and hit me in the head with it. Says I'm a stupid lout not to know the difference between a parade saddle and a campaign saddle. How'd I know? Why, he's been over here about a year, and that campaign saddle hasn't ever been unpacked. I had to get it from Lieutenant Stranger. How'd I know? Johnny said nothing. He realized he had heard something which conceivably might be important. Careful, careful. Don't you say anything to scare him. Where's your polish? I'll help you with the stirrups. The instant Johnny went to work, Dove, as usual, lay back on the hay. One of the stirrups wrapped around my head, cut my ear. It bled something fierce. Johnny was studying the saddle on his knees. It was of heavy black leather, brass, not silver mountings. Three girths instead of two. All sorts of hooks and straps for attaching map cases, spy glasses flask, kits of all sorts. Colonel Smith was going on a campaign, but perhaps not. He might merely be riding down to New York. He leaned back on his heels. Say, what if you and I took time out to eat supper? The Queen's cook has promised me a good dinner because I helped them at table this afternoon. Roast goose. I'll fix it so you can get on it, too. Oh, for goodness sake, no. It's past five o'clock. Colonel can't be going anywhere tonight. Oh, for land's sake, Johnny. He says I'm to show him that saddle by six sharp. And if he don't like its looks, he's going to cut me to mincemeat. He's always saying things like that. He's the... Well, after that, when Colonel Smith has settled down to play whist, can you get off? Tonight isn't like any other night. He told me to bring Sandy around for him, fed and clean and saddled with his old campaign saddle by eight o'clock tonight. Colonel Smith is going on a long journey. Starting tonight at 8, it might be a campaign. He had an idea. I should think if Colonel was making a long trip, he'd take Nan. She's so light and easy to ride, if he has far to go. He does like her better. She don't jounce his fat so. He always rides her around Boston. But only yesterday, he had Lieutenant Stranger take her over to the common when the men were drilling. Stranger says she's still a squirmy when she hears drums and shooting. I heard him say so. 
Oh, drums and shooting. This was not to be a peaceful ride to say New York. His cloth whipped over the black saddle leather. He spat on it and rubbed even harder. The one thing he must not say was the wrong thing. Nothing was better than the wrong thing. So for a while he said nothing. Sandy's good as gold, but he's an old horse and a little stiff. His front left leg won't last forever. Colonel Smith didn't say he was going off on him forever. This did not help much, but Dove went on. He and the horse doctor and Lieutenant Stranger were all looking at him just this morning. The horse doctor says old Sandy could do 30 miles easy, and Stranger said no, he wouldn't swear you could get Nan on and off a boat without her fussing. So the campaign would start about eight that night. The colonel's horse would be put on and off a boat. There would be a risk at least of drums and shooting. They were not going farther than 30 miles. Those men who thought the target of the expedition was going to be Lexington and Concord were right. And it would be Colonel Smith who would go on command. All Johnny's hidden excitement went into his polishing. The brass mounting turned to gold, the black leather to satin. There, you take that in and show your colonel. But he would wait one moment more. Dove might have something more to say when he came back after he had seen the colonel. Johnny went into goblin stall, but the horse pretended not to know him and put back his ears and nipped at him. Sandy next. The big yellow horse carefully moved over to give him room in the stall, nickering a little. He fondled the broad white striped face, pulled gently at the ears, little furry ears lost in mane like a pony's. I guess, Johnny said, looks like you'll be seeing that rab before I do, maybe in Lexington. You tell that rab he'd best look sharp Take good care of himself. Tell that rab, oh, anything. Dove came back in a jubilee. Colonel says I've done a fine job, and so quick he's going to give me tomorrow as a holiday. He don't expect to get back before night. Certainly, this campaign was going to be a short one, if everything went as the British expected. And we'll continue with this chapter in the next video. Thanks so much for listening. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. I love you guys.